haven't slept all night, and this morning I'm not myself, <laughs> as the phrase goes. <laughs> well, I read until 4 o'clock, and then I went to bed. And it wasn't any use. I'd think of something, I'd think of something else. And it gets light so early here, the sunlight simply pours into my bedroom. Well, this summer, while I'm here, there's this English book I want to translate. You read English? Oh, yes. Father, God bless him, absolutely loaded us down with education. It's absurd. It's idiotic. But at the same time, I have to admit, after his death, I began to gain weight. <laughs> yes, in a year, I've got fat like this, as though my body had taken the chance to break loose from him. Well, thanks to Father, my sisters and I know French, German, English, or any even knows Italian. What's the use of that? You know, Fairpawn, old man, it's funny how life changes, how it fools you. Today, out of pure boredom, just because I hadn't anything else to do, I picked up this book, Old University Lectures. I could hardly keep from laughing. Good God, I'm the secretary of the county board. The board Toda Popoff's the head of. I'm the secretary, and the most I can ever hope to be is a member of the county board. I, a member of a county board. I, who dream every night that I'm a professor at the University of Moscow. <laughs> a famous scholar of whom all Russia is proud. <laughs> uh, I couldn't rightly say I'm a little hard of hearing. Yes, well, if you could hear as you ought, I might not be talking to you. Got to talk to somebody. And my wife doesn't understand me. I'm afraid of my sisters. Somehow, I'm afraid they'll make fun of me. Make me feel ashamed. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't like cafes. Oh, but dear old Farapan, what I would give to be in Moscow now. <laughs> at test-offs or at the Great Moscow. <laughs> oh, in Moscow. Oh, you sit in a main room at a restaurant. You don't know anybody. Nobody knows you. Just the same. You don't feel like a stranger. Here you know everybody, and everybody knows you, and you're a stranger. A stranger. A stranger and lonely. You've got something against Natasha, my wife. I've seen that from the first day we were married. Well, Natasha's a splendid, honest person, straightforward and sincere. That's my opinion. I love and respect my wife. I respect her, you understand? I demand that others respect her, too. I repeat, she's an honest, sincere person. Anything you've got against her, if I may say so, is your imagination. In the second place, you seem to be angry because of the fact that I'm not a professor. I don't in some way advance knowledge. I serve the government. I, I'm a member of the county board. This service is just as sacred and lofty as service of knowledge. I'm a member of the county board, and I'm proud of it, if you want to know. Uh, in the third place, I have something else to say. I mortgaged the house without asking 
for your permission. For that, I am to blame. I, I admit it. I ask you to forgive me. But my debt forced me to. Thirty-five thousand! I, I don't play cards anymore. I gave it up a long time ago. But the main thing I can say to justify myself in this is, uh, your girls, you get a pension. I, I didn't get earnings, so listen. Isn't Masha here? But where is she? It's strange. Don't listen. They don't listen! Natasha is a splendid, honest, Person! When I got married, I thought we would be happy. Everybody happy. My dear sisters, my darling sisters, don't believe me. Don't What's become of it? My past. I was young and gay and clever. I had such beautiful dreams, such beautiful thoughts. My present and my future were bright with hope. Why is it that when one has barely begun to live, one grows boring, drab, uninteresting, lazy, indifferent, useless, unhappy? Our town has been in existence for 200 years. There's thousands and thousands of people living in it. There's not one that isn't exactly the same as the others. Never has been in it, either the past or the present. A single saint, a single scholar, a single artist, a single person famous enough for anyone to envy him or to try to be like him. They just eat, sleep, drink, and then die. And then others are born. And they too eat, sleep, drink. To keep from dying of boredom, they fill their lives with nasty gossip, vodka cards, affairs. <laughs> Wives deceive the husbands and the husbands lie. They pretend not to see anything. Kind of inexorable vulgarity oppresses the children. The divine spark within them dies and they become the same pitiful, identical corpses their mothers and fathers were before them. <laughs> well, what do you want? What? Oh, the papers to <laughs> I'm sick of you. Oh, but when I think of the future, oh, how good it is. I feel so light, so free. There in the distance, the light dawns. <laughs> I see freedom. I see my children and myself freed from all this laziness. Vodka, goose with cabbage, naps after dinner, all this laziness and cowardice.